us with worship tonight. <laughs> okay. So um, last month when I did communion, we, I talked a little bit about Smith Wigglesworth. <clears throat> For those of you that were here, if you weren't here, I'm just going to review it a little bit. Um, talked about how he was in the Word all the time, and when you had a meal with him, or were just hanging out with him, that you that we, we, like I lived in the 30s. <laughs> yeah, I'm cool. I'm like 100 years old. Um, when, yeah, amen. <laughs> Since Crimson, when she was, I don't know, she acted like an 80s girl. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, when Smith, Smith Wigglesworth lived, he was a great man of God who saw many miracles. He did crazy things like punch people, but when he punch people, cancer would like fly out of them and stuff like that. He saw legs grow out and um, just really cool stuff like that. But his, like, and the reason he saw that was because he was so close to the Father, so close to Jesus. <clears throat> so when um, this book was done by a guy, guy who got to hang out with him and they had dinners together and he said that Smith Wigglesworth wouldn't go any more than 15 minutes without talking about the word, but wouldn't go, you know, 15 minutes. How does it go? He, he wouldn't read the word for more than 15 minutes, but he wouldn't go more than 15 minutes without talking about the word. Right. So he was always, he was always in the word. He was always um, praying. praying. He was always, like, you know, making known the presence of God, like, hello. God is with us here. What does he have to teach us, right? What does he have to tell us today? So, um, Wigglesworth never went more than 15 minutes without reading the word of God. Regardless of where he was or in whose company he found himself, during the meals we shared together, eating and speaking of God's word were interspersed. Wigglesworth would say grace, which was more than a mere sentence, or sometimes in his cracked voice, he would sing a song of praise. After this, we would have the first course, then he would read and pray. Following that, we would eat the next course, and afterwards, regardless of whether or not it was the last course, he would read and pray again. That was how he lived. His life was not one of monotonous repetition. So the Word of God was really important, and being in his presence was always really important. And I just I <clears throat> wanted to bring us back to that again, just be thinking about, you know, last month I talked about like abiding in Psalm 91, that we abide, and in John it talks about abiding in him, and he abides in us, and what that really means. And it also says in the word that we sit at the right hand of the Father with Jesus, seated with Jesus at the right hand of the Father. And... Uh, exactly what Randy said a while ago about getting up in the morning and like haven't I taught you how to fight through all of the to-dos and all of the things that are coming at you and be with my presence first and be in your presence like all the day through right so um, tonight I just wanted as we're taking communion and thinking about being with him throughout our day um, uh, Col Colossians 3 came to me verses 1 through sixteen. So I'm gonna read the first this is the message Bible, which I thought it was a little impactful how it worded it, so I'm gonna use that tonight. <clears throat> so if you're serious about living this new resurrection life with Christ, act like it which is what made me think of Randy when he said, what are you doing first thing in the morning, you know? Thinking about, you know, the things of God and fighting to do that because sometimes the world just like comes in, right? Pursue the things over which Christ, 
presides. Don't shuffle along with your eyes to the ground, absorbed with the things right in front of you. Look up and be alert to what is going on around Christ. That's where the action is. See things from his perspective. Your old life is dead. Your new life, which is your real life, even though invisible to spectators, is with Christ and God. He is your life. When Christ, your real life, remember, shows up again on this earth, you'll show up too, the real you, the glorious you. Meanwhile, be content with obscurity like Christ. And that means killing off everything connected with that way of death. Sexual promiscuity, impurity, lust, doing whatever you feel like, when you feel like it, and grabbing whatever attracts your fancy. That's a life shaped by the things and feelings instead of by God. It's because of this kind of thing that God is about to explode in anger. It wasn't long ago that you were doing all that stuff and not knowing any better. But we know better now, so make sure it's all gone for good. Our bad temper, our irritability, our meanness, our profanity, our dirty talk. Don't lie to one another. You're done with that old life too. It's a filthy set of ill-fitting ill clothes you've stripped off and put in the fire. Now you're all dressed in a new wardrobe, right? Because we're seated at the right hand of the Father with Jesus, so we're in a new wardrobe. Yes. We don't have to walk in that stuff anymore, right? Amen. Every item of your new way of life is custom made. Hold on a second, okay? By the Creator with His label on it. All the old fashions are now obsolete. Words like Jewish and non-Jewish, religious and irreligious, insider and outsider, uncivilized and uncouth, slave and free mean nothing. From now on, everyone is defined by Christ. Everyone is included in Christ. Yeah. So tonight, as we're thinking about abiding in him and he abiding in us, and thinking about, you know, wherever we're at, you know, Kyle and I are still like, feel like we're, like, <laughs> Randy said fighting to, you know, we're talking, going to talk about the word every hour, you know, we're going, to talk about, we're going to talk about God as often as we can. And we were on vacation and we were trying to get communion in with our friends and we didn't get it in until like several days in, but we got it in, right? And it wasn't an amazing night. It was amazing. We did it in Yellowstone. <laughs> it was amazing. <laughs> in a tiny cabin. <laughs> but it was really good, and we got to pray together, and we got to, yeah. We're going to be his presence. <laughs> huh? uh, what I kept thinking and hearing is, is the Lord being the Holy Spirit, and that we Spirit of God that he causes um, this e to be equalized. He's like the equalizer. So whatever situation or you're walking into, um, the Holy Spirit causes everything to be equalized so there's no one above you. Everybody is equal. And you can talk and you can have and you can do what God wants you to do equal to the person next to you because God causes it to be that way to be the equalizer and I just think because I remember this show from the I don't know 70s or 80s and it was called the equalizer and I mean you go and change situations so people wouldn't be harassed but God did this for us from the cross that he will equalize and bring everything to where we're equal and and be we wouldn't we wouldn't be chained to anything we would be free to communicate and be friends and, and give you know God's love and know that you know we, we all have something to in you know to give into somebody else's life it's just you know not about one person or you know the just one pastor with a great big pulpit up there who never comes down to the congregation but everybody's equal yeah. anyway it's just amen yeah uh -huh. that's good Amen. You have something to say? Yeah, like, you know. 
So when I was at the glass works earlier, I felt something real from God and that I needed to preach at church. And I felt something powerful that brung me to things that needed life. And I felt more helpful and incredible. Amen. And you felt God's presence, right? Yeah, amen. And when God came into the world, he wanted us to make it a good world and for other people to live. I had friends that are from Vancouver that I bring life to them too. Amen. And Jack and Nate are the best friends I could ever have at Vancouver. Amen. And Jesus made me and everybody else. He made us so we could help others to stay alive. And when communion brings us together and makes us proud of something else that is going to begin in our life, and every time when we pray to God, it begins another time. And when we read the Bible and we preach and we pray and we speak to others, we light up the sky, we light up the world a better place, and all that we want to do is help help others, do what we can do, and, and then we should be proud of ourselves that we did that task. And just like mom said, the, you know, uh, the old days are over, they, you know. Our old self is over? Yeah. It's our new self? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Our new life. Yeah. yeah. Was Amen. Amen. <laughs> Outside, you should open a new life and look towards what you should do, not look back what you did bad. You should open what you need to, open another girl or another thing that needs to come alive. Open up what you need to do. Open up things that you need to open up. Open what is life. Open what is love. These friends here are friends of everybody that need help or need love or need Food, life, or anything. Remnants. Oh, oh, Remnants. no, no, don't get me back to that. <laughs> and so we take communion for life, and it's back to mom now. Amen. Thank you. Okay. I guess I should grab this. Oh. Oh, did you get one? Yeah, it was for all. I know. I'm telling you that. I can't speak for that. I found to get a few more MMs. Those were. Oh, really? Oh, come on. I was expecting that. Yeah, I was expecting that. You know what? I'll be satisfied with the gold. So when we take communion, 
when we take communion, we always start with um, asking for forgiveness, taking a moment just to you and God, and making sure that we've like we we ask for we ask for forgiveness. We forgive and let go of anybody that's wronged us. And we also ask you, Lord, for forgiveness of all the things that we've done today. And we thank you that we um, have the wisdom and understanding and knowing how to, if we have been wrong, to walk through that in a healthy manner. And understand God's love even more. So I really liked in communion this second half as you guys are just having a moment with the Lord I'm going to read this. Colossians 3.12 in light of what I've read already just putting on our new clothes be thinking of this. So chosen by God for this new life of love dress in the wardrobe God picked out for you. Compassion, kindness, humility, quiet strength, discipline, be even-tempered, content with second place, quick to forgive an offense, forgive as quickly and completely as the master forgave you, and regardless of what else you put on, wear love. It's your basic, all-purpose garment. Never be without it. Let the peace of Christ keep you in tune with each other, in step with each other, none of this going off and doing your own thing, and cultivate thankfulness. Let the word of Christ, the message, have the run of the house. Give it plenty of room in your lives. Instruct and direct one another using good common sense. And sing. Sing your hearts out to God. Let every detail in your lives, words, actions, whatever, be done in the name of the Master, Jesus, thanking God the Father every step of the way. So if we take cracker. I already ate my cracker. Okay, she already ate her cracker. <laughs> we thank you, Lord, for your body. That you were willing to go. You had everybody, everybody by name here in mind when you went to the cross. We thank you that you you took sickness and you took poverty. And you took us being um, away from our Father. You took that and reunited us back with our Father through you going to the cross. You made it so that we could come boldly to the throne room of God. We thank you for being willing to do that, to go for us. Stop. We honor you and love you, Lord. Thank you. Take the cracker. What the? What happened to it? I thought, like. Okay, come here. Go sit down. Mm -hmm. Sit down. We thank you for. Your blood, Lord. And yet again, going for us and pouring your blood out for us so that we could be reunited, so that we could have a relationship, so that we could abide in you and you abide in us, <clears throat> so that we could be protected while we're here on earth, so that we could have con revelation of your word so we could walk in health we thank you that of all the benefits of salvation <clears throat> and everything that you brought to us and we remember tonight everything that you did for us and we thank you and we honor you and we love you in Jesus name I plead the blood of Jesus over everyone here tonight and that they're walk in health and safety this week. In Jesus' name, amen.
Okay, we're going to have another song, worship. <clears throat>